To learn the good, the bad, and the reality of the off-grid lifestyle, click subscribe so you don't miss anything. Hit the bell notification. So I almost feel like I'm getting ready to do a series of videos. In yesterday's video, as well as the day before, I've been discussing our outdoor wood furnace, also called a heat exchanger, outdoor heat exchanger for winter heating. And so if you get on YouTube, if you type in outdoor uh, homemade outdoor wood exchanger, you'll see one of these. A lot of people make them. They're all over Pinterest. So I've been really trying to get ours to work. We actually have a fire in it today. It's kind of dying down right now. I probably should open it up, I don't know. Uh, the wood was really wet. I haven't dried it out. This has really helped me determine what I needed to do to build the heat exchanger. Now, yesterday's video, I was explaining how the back, I was gonna use the back as the primary capturing of the heat. So the idea of it is the blocks create an insulation. And so I'm insulating the entire outside, except for the front, of course, and capturing that heat. And so then I will run, it's not finished right now. I have to put a piece of metal for the chimney. That's the chimney output right there. It's upside down, but that goes on top of the stove here. Then I'll put the metal and then I'll run a chimney up and then I'll put another layer of bricks around the metal to hold that heat in. And then right here, I will have a piece of ductwork. I think this might be too big. We're still discussing that, we, whether we'll use metal or this. We probably should have gotten a six inch. The heat will come out of here and it's really hot. You stick your hand in here, you're gonna hold it in for a few seconds. I wanted to give it a little update, so I don't know how this little piece is gonna fit into the rest of the video. It might just appear, so I apologize for the inconsistent editing, but I've worked on the outdoor wood furnace a little bit more this evening and I've come a long ways got a lot accomplished and I'm really happy with the way things are going so right here you see this is where the chimney will come out of right now I got it covered up with a brick because I, I needed to seal it up so I could get an idea how well this is working so right here where the thermometer and the, the meat tongs are that is where the, the ventilation will go right now I have a fan blowing on the other side, right there, and it's pushing that out. And right now, as it stands, this is a, at 200 degrees. And so the heat comes out of here and will enter into the camper. Then you have the return, which will come out inside the camper and down by the bottom. Right here. And so air will be drawn in from the downside of the camper and then pushed back up, up to the top of the camper here. In the videos where you see these heat exchanger videos, you'll see people who won't use any type of blower to blow the, the heat around. 
it will work automatically. You don't need electric for this system. So the heat will actually come out of here through the ductwork and into the camper and then return. Now I am going to use a fan. So I'm gonna blow the cold air out of the camper and push heat into the camper. So I'm gonna help the natural circulation along with a blower that has a thermostat on it. Now, once the thermostat kicks off, the heat will still circulate, but not quite as quickly as what I anticipate. Now, I've really closed in the design here. Yesterday, I had the back wall extended out quite a bit, probably another so three or four inches. I extended the wall all the way back out to here. Well, since then, I have pushed it in. I realized the tighter the spot, the hotter it's going to get inside here. And it is, it's really hot. It got so hot that I tried to rearrange the bricks and they were just too hot to, to touch. So I think we're on the right path. Uh, like I said, we threw some logs in there. They're pretty wet, they're not burning very hot. The heat that is being contained in there with all those blocks is phenomenal. So I think we're gonna have a lot of success with this. That being said, I've worked three days on this trying to come up with something that's gonna work. This is why I started in May. I'm not gonna need it until October, but I'm really glad I started now so Carolyn and I could discuss what we were gonna do, explain to us our thinking. So we're just working it steadily, but slowly. The other thing is it rained most of the morning this morning, so it really put a damper on our progress. But this brings me to what I wanted to talk about. I think we've gotten into such a rush, rush society that we just try to buy things, buy things, buy things, make it perfect. The thing is, is I've seen a lot of people design these out of metal and then wrap the metal up with bricks. And yeah, that is the greatest idea. When you go online and you watch all these people, they're buying brand new stuff. And they got it all mapped out and they're going out buying a brand new stove. They actually go online and they'll, the plans online, you can get plans online. And so you go buy all the materials that the plans tell you to go buy and it just goes right together. But you're spending a fortune to heat your house with a wood stove that I'm trying to build for mostly free. The wood stove that we bought was $50. We bought it used and everything else we found here on the property, all those blocks we have found. And so we're just gonna keep rearranging and rearranging it until we get a system that works. Yesterday, I tried to seal up the cracks with mud and that worked out really well. See, I got all that mud pressed up in here. So I don't have any heat loss from there because mud is just as good insulator as the, the blocks are. So even though this is taking an enormous amount of time to do, and there is a lot of frustration, I will admit, I get frustrated. And then I think, well, wait a minute, why am I frustrated? This is why we started this now instead of in October. It gets tiring and I gotta remember to drink my water. For some reason, I get busy and I get focused and laser focused, I forget to drink my water. And I lose track of time. And then I gotta go and get in there and get to work because I still got a job I gotta do. But in the end, I think if you're gonna live off grid and you're gonna try to reduce your budget, and these are the things you have to do. I've mentioned in the past that in order for me to have a less stressful lifestyle, in my past, I worked for an employer. I was an operations manager, production manager uh, for a fairly significant company. We also hired disabled employees and we trained our disabled employees to go work out in a manufacturing environment. It was a really stressful job. I worked 16 hours a day most days. And I didn't have time to do anything else. I didn't have time to enjoy the money I was making. I, the weekends, you would do whatever you could just to slow things down. Well, now I work for myself. I can kind of do my own hours. You know, when it's colder and it's raining, I can work more hours online, do my job. But when it's nice like this, I can come out here and I can work uh, on my property and there's no stress. On my online self-employed job is no, no stress. And this is no stress. And it's gonna take me weeks maybe to get this thing to work right. But what difference does it make? I'm not in a hurry. And because I planned ahead to make sure that once winter gets here, this thing's gonna work really well. And well, like I said, we're on day three. We're making lots of progress. 
Now we will have to buy an exhaust pipe. That is going to be another expense. We don't have an exhaust pipe. We did buy the ductwork. I should have mentioned that. The ductwork was $32. We'll be up to a hundred bucks probably by the time this is all said and done. So we have a wood furnace that would cost most people five or six hundred dollars to build and we'll have it for under a hundred dollars. And, and I think this is what makes my life so rewarding. My suggestion is, is to slow down the lifestyle and work things out. You know, make sure you give yourself plenty of time so you can work things out. Hope that inspires you to start creating things on your own. Thanks for watching.